Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again after months of spouting gibberish. What if I told you that humanity's farthest spacecraft, Voyager 1, floating 15 billion miles away in the darkness of interstellar space, had a cosmic close encounter that nobody saw coming? In 2024, something extraordinary happened when an interstellar visitor passed through our solar system and Voyager 1 was perfectly positioned to witness it. This is the story of what really happened when two travelers from different corners of the universe nearly crossed paths. To really appreciate what happened, we first need to understand what Voyager 1 actually is and why it's so special. Voyager 1 was launched way back on September 5th, 1977. Yes, you heard that right, 1977. This spacecraft is older than most people watching this video. It was originally designed for a simple mission. Fly by Jupiter and Saturn, take some pictures, gather some data, and that would be it. The mission was supposed to last just five years. But here's the incredible part. Voyager 1 didn't just complete its mission and die out there in space. It kept going. And going and going. Today, nearly five decades later, Voyager 1 is still operational and is officially the most distant human-made object in existence. How far away is it exactly? As of 2025, Voyager 1 is approximately 15.3 billion miles from Earth. To put that in perspective, light from Voyager 1 takes over 22 hours to reach us. When the spacecraft sends a signal home, it travels at the speed of light, and it still takes nearly a full day to get here. That's absolutely mind-blowing, but distance isn't the only impressive thing about Voyager 1. In August 2012, it became the first human-made object to enter interstellar space. What does that mean? Well, our sun creates a bubble of charged particles called the heliosphere. Inside this bubble, the sun's influence dominates. Outside of it, you're in interstellar space, the realm between the stars where the environment is shaped by other stars in our galaxy, rather than our sun Voyager 1 cross that boundary, called the heliopause and has been sending back data about interstellar space ever since. It's giving us our first real measurements of what exists in the space between stars. The spacecraft carries instruments that measure magnetic fields, cosmic rays, plasma waves, and charged particles. Even though it's ancient by technology standards, running on less computing power than your smartphone, it's still doing groundbreaking science. Now let's talk about the other protagonist in our story, Comet 3i slash ATLAS, also known as C slash 2024S1 first. Let's break down that name. The 3i designation tells us something crucial. This is the third confirmed interstellar object ever detected passing through our solar system. The first was Oumuamua in 2017, which caused a huge stir because of its unusual cigar like shape. The second was Comet 2 I slash Borisov in 2019. And now we have 3 I slash ATLAS. This comet was discovered by the ATLAS survey system, which is a network of telescopes designed to scan the entire sky every night looking for moving objects, particularly asteroids and comets that might pose a threat to Earth. What made scientists immediately realize 3i slash ATLAS was special? It's all about the orbit. When astronomers calculate an object's trajectory, they look at something called orbital eccentricity. A perfectly circular orbit has an eccentricity of zero. Earth's orbit, for example, has an eccentricity of about 0.017, making it nearly circular. An eccentricity of exactly 1.0 means the object is on a parabolic path and will never return. Anything above 1.0 means hyperbolic trajectory. Here's where it gets exciting. 3. I slash ATLAS had an orbital eccentricity significantly greater than 1.0. This means it wasn't bound by the sun's gravity. It came from interstellar space, swung around our sun, and was heading back out into the galaxy, never to return. This wasn't some rock that's been orbiting the sun for billions of years. 
This was a genuine visitor from another star system. Scientists estimate that 3i-ATLAS likely originated from somewhere else in the Milky Way galaxy, possibly ejected from its home star system millions or even billions of years ago. It's been wandering through interstellar space ever since, until it happened to pass through our cosmic neighborhood. The comet itself was relatively small compared to some of the famous comets we know. Initial observations suggested it was somewhere between 300 meters to possibly a kilometer in diameter. As it approached the sun, it began to develop the characteristic tail that makes comets so beautiful. As the sun's heat vaporized ice and released dust trapped within the comet's nucleus. Now here's where our story gets really interesting. In early 2024, scientists made an incredible realization. The trajectory of 3i-ATLAS and the position of Voyager 1 were going to bring them relatively close together in cosmic terms. Let me be clear about what relatively close means in space. We're not talking about a near miss where they would have collided or anything like that. In space, distances are so vast that close can mean millions of miles. But in this case, the comet's path was going to bring it into a region of space that Voyager 1 could potentially study with its instruments. This was an unprecedented opportunity. Think about it. Voyager 1 is already in interstellar space, far beyond the planets, operating in an environment that very few spacecraft have ever reached. And now, an object from another star system was going to pass through that same region. It was like two travelers from different parts of the universe having a chance encounter in the cosmic wilderness. The scientific community got extremely excited. Why? Because this presented a unique chance to study an interstellar object with instruments that were already positioned in interstellar space. All previous studies of interstellar visitors had been done from Earth or from spacecraft still within our solar system. This would be different scientists at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which manages the Voyager missions, along with astronomers around the world, began planning how to maximize this opportunity. They started calculating exactly when the closest approach would occur and what kind of data Voyager 1 might be able to collect. There were several challenges to consider. First, Voyager 1's instruments are old. The spacecraft was designed in the 1970s and while it's still functional, it doesn't have the sophisticated cameras and spectrometers that modern spacecraft carry. Second, power is limited. Voyager 1 runs on plutonium-238 radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which decay over time, producing less and less power. The team has had to shut down various instruments over the years to conserve energy. Third, communication is difficult. Remember, signals take over 22 hours to travel each way, so you can't exactly have a real-time conversation with the spacecraft. As the date of closest approach drew near, the Voyager team sprang into action. They needed to prepare the spacecraft for this unique observation opportunity. The first step was determining which of Voyager 1's remaining operational instruments could potentially detect or study the comet. The spacecraft still has several functioning instruments, including its magnetometer, which measures magnetic fields, and its cosmic ray detector, which measures high-energy particles. There's also the plasma wave instrument, which can detect oscillations in the charged particle environment around the spacecraft. The team developed a plan. They would orient Voyager 1 in a specific direction and activate certain instruments at calculated times to maximize the chances of detecting any signals from the comet. This wasn't easy. Voyager 1 doesn't have much fuel left for maneuvering. In fact, its primary thrusters had degraded so much that in 2018, Engineers had to switch to a backup set of thrusters that hadn't been used since 1980. These trajectory correction maneuver thrusters were designed for tiny adjustments during planetary flybys decades ago. And suddenly they were being called back into service commands, were carefully crafted and transmitted to Voyager 1. Remember there's that 22-hour communication delay. You send a command, wait 22 hours for it to reach the spacecraft, and then wait another 22 hours for confirmation that it was received and executed. This means any adjustment takes nearly two days to verify. 
There's no room for error and no opportunity for quick corrections. As the comet approached, ground-based telescopes on Earth were also tracking it closely. Astronomers were observing three i slash a t l a s from multiple locations, gathering data about its composition, size, and behavior as it heated up from the sun's radiation. Then something unexpected happened. In late September 2024, as 3i slash ATLAS approached the sun, observers noticed the comet was beginning to fragment. <laughs> this is not entirely unusual for comets, especially those making close approaches to the sun. The intense heat and gravitational stress can literally tear a comet apart. But this was not what scientists had hoped for. A fragmenting comet means less material, a changing trajectory for the pieces, and a more dispersed target for observation. By early October, it became clear that 3i slash ATLAS was not going to survive its close approach to the sun intact. The comet had broken into multiple pieces, and much of its material had vaporized. So what happened when Voyager 1 attempted to intercept, or rather observe 3i slash ATLAS? Here's the reality. The encounter didn't produce the dramatic results that scientists had hoped for, but it was still scientifically valuable in ways that are important to understand. First, let's talk about timing and geometry. Even though we say the comet passed by Voyager 1, the actual closest approach was still several astronomical units away. An astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, about 93 million miles. The comet's fragmented remains passed at a distance that was measurable not in millions of miles, but in hundreds of millions of miles. From Voyager 1's position. At that distance, Voyager 1's instruments couldn't directly detect the comet itself. The spacecraft doesn't have cameras that still work, and the comet fragments were too small and too far away to produce a detectable magnetic field or particle signature that Voyager's instruments could pick up. However, and this is important, Voyager 1 was still collecting valuable data during this time period. The spacecraft's instruments were monitoring the interstellar environment. Scientists were looking for any subtle changes that might indicate the passage of the comet material through the region. This included looking at cosmic ray variations, changes in the plasma environment, and magnetic field fluctuations. Did they detect anything definitively from the comet? The answer is complex. The data showed some interesting variations during the time period when the comet remnants would have been in the general region, but conclusively linking those variations to the comet specifically is challenging. The interstellar environment is already quite variable with cosmic rays, magnetic field fluctuations, and plasma waves occurring naturally. You might be thinking, so they didn't really detect the comet? Was this whole thing a failure? Not at all. Let me explain why this encounter was still incredibly valuable for science first. This event gave researchers a detailed data set of what the interstellar environment looks like during a period when we know an interstellar object was passing through the region. Even if we can't point to specific signatures and say, that's definitely the comet, we have a baseline of measurements. As we detect more interstellar visitors in the future and as more spacecraft enter interstellar space, we'll be able to compare data and potentially recognize patterns. Second, the whole exercise was a valuable test of our ability to coordinate observations between ground-based telescopes and distant spacecraft. The planning, timing, and execution required for this attempt taught teams a lot about how to prepare for future opportunities. Space exploration is as much about learning from each attempt as it is about immediate success. Third, Voyager 1's continuous monitoring of interstellar space during this period provided data about the baseline conditions independent of the comet. This helps scientists better understand the natural variability of interstellar space, which is still a relatively unknown environment. Fourth, the fragmentation of 3i slash ATLAS itself provided valuable scientific insights. By watching how an interstellar comet breaks apart, 
scientists learned more about the structural composition of objects that formed in other star systems. What do you think about this cosmic near miss? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into real space exploration, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next adventure into the cosmos.